Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all very much for joining us for today's virtual lunch meeting, Revolutionising Self-Care with ReadyWrap, supported kindly by LNR Medical. And our speakers today are Luxmi Dumnun, Nurse Consultant, Tissue Viability at CNWL, and Amar Dillon, Account Manager at LNR Medical. Just a bit of housekeeping before we start. Please ask any questions by using the comment box and we will use as many of them as possible in our live Q&A at the end of the presentation. Certificates are available and a link will be posted at the end of the session. And then also please bear with us if we experience any technical issues. We are all um, filming remotely uh, and let's hope we don't have any today. So without further ado, I'll hand over to our first speaker who is Luxmi. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today on this virtual platform. And thank you to JCN for supporting clinicians in their personal and professional journey, despite all challenging times. So today's session is, we, as Claire said, we're going to look at revolutionizing self-care with ReadyWrap. And I'm hoping at the end of the session, you will have a better overview of venous disease, understand why we need compression, understanding self-care options available for compression, and last but not least, give you a better understanding of ReadyWrap and how ReadyWrap is used in practice. So the burden of wound care, as we know, is escalating. In December 2020, Guest AR published a cohort study evaluating the burden of wounds in 2017-2018. This was an update from the 2012-2013 data published in 2015. The aim of this study was to assess the extent of change in the burden of wounds over five years in terms of annual prevalence, health outcomes, healthcare resource use, NHS costs. However, we know leg ulcer continue to be the most prevalent wound type in the UK. But before we continue, I would like you all to think out loud and think how many patients are on your caseload with a lower limb conditions and how many patients have you treated for recurrence of leg ulcers. For me, I can tell you 50% of community nursing time is taken up on wound care. And if we could reduce some of the time spent on wound care, it would definitely free our time to spend more um, nursing time on complex patients and releasing more nursing time as such. So yes, we do know that over 1 million patients equates to 2% of UK population that is affected with the leg ulcers. And we also know the cost it is associated with our NHS and healthcare. We also know that the GSAR paper told us about 71% increase in wounds since 2012, 2013. And as I say, it takes up to 50% of our nursing time in the community. But what is it and why do we get it? So we do know that venous disease is very common. And the most common pathological conditions in the venous system occur in the legs and include valve incompetence and venous obstruction. So the valve incompetence is where the reflux in increased venous pressure and that leads to venous insufficiency. And that's where you get um, clinical um, signs like leg edema or skin changes such as varicose eczema. And you also have got venous obstruction where it's quite common in people with lack of muscle palm activity, bed confinement, or even paralysis. But what is a normal venous flow? Let's have a look at the next slide. So in this slide, you can see that the normal venous flow, healthy vessels facilitate that return towards the heart and prevent the black flow, back flow of the blood. And that's what it should be in a normal person with normal venous system on the legs. And what is a compromised venous flow, as you can see in the next slide, it's a damaged valve which causes the back, black, back flow of blood and exposes the superficial vein network to higher pressure than they will normally get. And that's where we get venous hypertension. We can find it in reduced um, immobility on the foot and calf muscle as it's compromising low. So as you can see in this video, the valve is not working as effective as the first slide because it's compromised and it's really disrupting the blood flow. 
So let's look at what is illegal. So now that we know what is valid in competency. So if some of you like myself have been trained many moons ago, we know that the definition for legals is have changed. And this is one of the reasons attending session like this itself is really good for your CPD because it keeps you updated. Did you know that a leg ulcer is now defined as a loss of skin between the leg or uh, the knee and on the leg or the foot, but which takes more than two weeks to heal? I was trained when it was six weeks, eventually come to four weeks, but now it's two weeks. That means we've got to work quicker and do our assessment more rapidly to prevent these from becoming chronic. And we also know that recurrence following healing is up to 26 to 69 percent. Once healed, a patient are, is advised to wear compression hosiery on a long term basis to manage their chronic venous insufficiency. However, I know and you know many patients do not concord with this hosiery treatment. And this is where we get lots of high rates of recurrence. Yes, it, it might be difficult for donning and duffing, which we got the solution for because we got AIDS. And it might be discomfort, or it might just purely be uh, inappropriately or badly fitted garments or non-concordance. And that's where I'm hoping today this session will help you make some decisions. And what it is that we need to do when we have a leg ulcer, so first and foremost, you have to do a full holistic assessment. And a full holistic assessment includes the general assessment, where you look at the medical history, medication, indication, psychosocial factors and the ability to self-care or any help involved. And looking at the leg itself, look for skin changes, look for presence of edema, look for any skin discoloration. And thirdly, don't forget your vascular assessment. It's very important to determine the vascular status and to know the suitability for patients to have compression or not. The National Wound Care Strategy has also set out guidance for us and to, for, to, for us clinicians to be able to get the ac accurate assessment and holistic assessment on the patient, we also have to look out for red flags. And the red flags can include acute infection of the leg or the foot, where you get unilateral redness, swelling, pain, pus or heat, symptoms of sepsis. And I know some settings, community and acute, we use new scoring, national early warning sign symptoms. And this is a very good opportunity if you can't detect the wound infection because of other medical conditions, this is new score will help you. Acute and chronic limb threatening, suspected DVT, suspected skin cancer, and obviously discussing the first aid of national wound care strategy is tell us once you've excluded, you rule out the red flags, you can start your patient onto at least up to 20 millimeter mercury of pressure if you have got the staff capacity to do the the assessment within two weeks or you haven't got the competency so this is where it gives you some time to make sure you've got time to do a decent but full holistic assessment to manage your patient properly why do we need compression therapy for treatment of venous leg ulcers let's find out so compression how does it work compression therapy is actually graduated pressure to the skin of the lower limb from the ankle right up to the knee so the level of pressure can be influenced by the type of compression material used and how it is applied. And we do know by, apply, by applying the compression bandages properly, it relieves the symptoms of lower limb by acting on both the venous and the lymphatic system to improve your removal of fluid from the limb. Following assessment to determine whether which compression is suitable, what level of, of compression will be suitable, it is the cornerstone of to make sure that the both venous and lymphatic disease, it helps to improve your, reduce your edema. That's the reason competency is very important. You need to have the skills, the knowledge to make that decision, what type of compression my patient will need, what level they need and apply it properly to prevent further damage to the patient. Compression system, we know there's different level of compression. We've got the very traditional that we all love and know, it's your bandaging. Then once the patient is healed or sometimes following your lower limb pathway, you can get patient into what we call the ulcer kits, which is again delivering different level of compression therapy. And we also got what we call the compression wraps. So it's garments that are actually designed to ease solution for self-care. So 
you have free tools in your box to manage your patient with lower limb. But remember, as a clinician, not all patients will fit in, into one box. So it's always good for you to know what else do I have in my toolbox? So if they don't want bandages or they, don't, they can't have bandages, what else can I have? So that we do have lots of patients who fit into that. They can have bandages, but due to their work, they can't have bandages. And that's why we have to think holistically. What else can we do? So what compression system is available for my patient in my clinical area? Thanks to the, um, the help of Eleanor and following the national wound care um, pathway, we have what we call the best practice for leg ulcer pathway. And this in itself, it tells you if you are new in practice or even you don't know what to do, you've got the patient, it's a step-by-step -step to support the clinicians to make that decision. Yes, you exclude your red flags. Yes, you do your Doppler. It tells you exactly when the patient will need the compression bandaging and when can you safely put them into hosieries or wraps if they haven't got edema or misshapen legs, for example. So this is the lower limb pathway. It guides you to make that decision safely and also provide us clinicians like myself how to empower my patient in taking responsibility for their legs by sharing care and self-care because we know it's really, really important to involve the patient in their care if you do want to get good partnership working and concordance. Self-care, as I just mentioned, it, it's very important. What is self-care? All of us, if not most of us, have seen it in being implemented during COVID. When we couldn't have go in to see patient or patient did not want us to come in, this is where we've had to work in partnership with themselves, with their family members, the carers, to implement it. So it's where we empower them, providing them with the confidence to support the information to promote independence in looking after their legs, looking after their skin, managing their wounds or maintaining their legs healed. And this is the reason why we've done it during COVID. It's been well received and patients love it because they feel empowered. They feel I'm, a, I'm special, I'm important. I'm being involved in my care. So let's carry on. And this is where you need the tools to be able to do that safely. So LNR is committed and I work very closely with them in terms of delivering training to my services my community nursing staff and across the trust. And they are very committed to drive best practice of leg ulcer care. How they've done that so far with us and with other clinicians, it's about knowing the importance of the timely and effective intervention of venous and lymphatic disorders. We believe, and as clinicians, that patients and clinicians deserve the best. And Eleanor works in partnership with NHS to make sure they're driving the timely assessment of leg ulcers to prevent chronicity. Remember the Julian Guest uh, um, paper. They enable rapid and safe debridement to facilitate healing and, wound, and while improving dressing selection. Remember you, uh, using the times and they have got all this support for us. By supporting us, myself, my clinicians, clinically proven uh, cost-effective compression selection. So if you don't know you're in a patient home, you don't know what to go for, they've got what we call the hosiery selector app. And this guides you step by step what to use and how to use it. I will now hand over to my colleague Amar, who will introduce you to Regular and its concept as a way of self-care. Thank you, Lakshmi. That was really insightful. So now that you understand why compression is so important, it's time to put that into practice with ReadyWrap. So what is ReadyWrap? Simply put, ReadyWrap is a compression wrap system that delivers full therapeutic compression. It's easy to use for patients with venous and lymphatics disease. ReadyWrap is based on Actico bandage system and therefore it uses short stretch properties as well as Velcro fasteners that can be adjusted, removed and reapplied as the edema reduces. ReadyWrap is ideal solution for self-care. ReadyWrap has a wide range that suits every patient's need. There's a foot piece, calf piece, thigh piece, as well as a knee piece, which is perfect for a full limb. ReadyWrap also has some newer additions, which some of you may not have seen, that includes a toe piece, which can be applied for edematous toes, as opposed to toe bandaging, as well as the extender strap for better suitability and comfort, especially for those patients that may be in between two sizes. Just a bit of an update, ReadyWrap um, liners can now also be purchased or prescribed separately. How do I apply ReadyWrap? As you can see from here, okay, I've got my ReadyWrap 
with me. You can clearly see it's color coded to make it simple to apply. You start with the light color moving towards the darker shade of blue. You begin with the horizontal, followed by the vertical Velcro straps. You apply a 50% overlap on full stretch to lock that section into place before slowly making your way up each segment. What makes Ready Wrap so great? Firstly, it's clinically effective. By using short stretch properties, you receive therapeutic work, working and tolerable resting pressures. Secondly, it's cost effective. By using Ready Wrap, you're able to reduce nursing or clinic visit times and you save on application a few minutes versus 15 to 20 minutes if you were applying bandaging. Ready Wrap also reduces material waste as you no longer need single, to, single use bandaging. So to summarize what I've gone through, Ready Wrap is clinically effective, Ready Wrap is cost effective, it bridges the gap between intensive and maintenance therapy, it allows patient to prevent fluid to rebound as they're able to remove and readjust themselves. I will now pass back over to Luxmi, who will talk about Ready Wrap and how that's worked in her practice. Thank you, Emma. So now let's take a look of, of how Ready Wrap has helped patients in my clinical practice. Rest assured, I've got many more case studies, but due to time, I thought I'll focus on one which was really made a difference. So we had this 53-year-old lady who attended our clinic, and she was referred for recurrent leg ulcers. She has had three episodes of recurrences in two years. Bearing in mind she healed very rapidly in compression bandages, as soon as she was put into hosiery and discharged, she, within a few months after she's uh, re-referred to us, this was very clear that the patient was not able to manage um, either self-care or using the hosiery due to the issues with her back and her application. She had issues with doning and duffing. She's been given multiple aids. However, on the third episode, and as I say, holistic assessment is very, very important. It's not just looking at the hole in the patient, but the patient as a whole. So on the third assessment, what we did, we find out that she's healing really well into bandages, Let's find an alternative option to hosiery to empower her on her self-care and maintain her confidence in that she can look after her legs herself. The next um, slide will show you the skin damage that was caused from application of hosiery when she was referred back to us. So these images were when the patient were in hosiery. The skin damage were noted from poor application of hosiery when she was pulling it in. And as I said, doning and doffing may not be an easy thing so we, for any old, old patients. If you've got poor dexterity, we know this patient will struggle. So irrespective of the aids we give them, sometimes we need to also think outside the box, what else do they need to be able to do that? And during our assessment, it's really important to note when you're doing your holistic assessment, what can the patient do and can't do? So what we did for this lady, obviously on the third assessment of that when she came to us, we measured her when she was here for ready wraps. And I am very pleased to tell you, I have met her before I did this presentation. Four years now, she, she remains healed still. She hasn't had any new episode of ulceration. She's been reviewed and measured for new garments since we issued her with the first one. She's self-caring very safely. There is no issue that's been reported for that patient. From a clinician point of view, I know it's an ongoing battle of who takes ownership of the patient when they need host reapply, but they are unable to do so themselves. Is it a social or medical issue? But while we're looking at what issue it is, the patient should not get caught in the middle. And us clinicians, we need to find ways of how we can help these patients to prevent recurrences happening that impact on, on their quality of life, sorry. So for patients with no care or support or poor dexterity, think outside the box. We do not dish out ready wrap in the first assessment, but there is the lower limb pathway there to guide you about best practice to follow and to improve patient quality of life and outcomes. If we've got loads of patients that due to wearing uniform and going to work, they can't afford the bandages. So that's where your lower limb pathway is there. If they can fit into a hosiery kit, they fit into a hosiery kit. I've got loads of patients as we speak right now on ready wraps, and I've collected feedback from five of our current patients on ready wraps. And this is what they had to say. They, one of them said to me, there was no need for flimsy devices anymore to put them on. I can apply my wrap every day after shower. I don't need my neighbor coming in anymore. 
one of the it was a, a London underground tube driver who again was very meticulous about not able to wear his uniform. He said it fits nicely under his clothes and he can wear his normal footwear, which is great. We can keep people at work, but at the same time, making sure they're having the right treatment. And one of my patients said, I've got the responsibility of adjusting the Velcro myself. I don't need the nurse to come and do it for me. And last but not least, I've got one who said it was so easy to apply. There was no messing around. So these are some of my current patients that we have in ready wraps at the moment. And as I said, in our current practice and many com other community settings, patients are assessed at first appointment for options suitable for their long-term maintenance. We do have a lower limb pathway that we follow. And once the patient is healed, we make sure they are assessed for suitability of garment. We also make sure they're provided initially, supported to how to apply it. Does it work for you? And help to build that confidence that yes, it is my leg, I can look after it. And we also got videos online that we can show to the patients when they attend a clinic or we go in their home, that we can show hints and tips of how to apply their wraps on. So this is what happened in my area of practice. But if you do want to know exactly how the LNR team can support you, there is plenty of extra tool that you can have in your toolbox. And I do hope this information has been informative. I will hand over to Amar now to talk to you about what is available to support you in your local practice. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Lakshmi. Um, it's really powerful to show you know, how it can make a huge difference to patients' lives. LNR has recently launched a new free learning hub. It has 10 RCN accredited modules, as well as all the product information and videos you can need, all in one convenient place. To support with ReadyWrap, there's also a ReadyWrap zone, which hosts measuring, application forms, and patient leaflets, again, as I've mentioned before, conveniently all in one place. We've also got Club Squeeze In, which is supported by Johnny Vegas. And the idea behind Squeeze In and its aim is to empower people to manage their leg health. OK, if you do need support with this, OK, if you visit squeezein.life, you're able to request um, a pack. And inside that, you'll have a cross checker form, a compression hosiery measuring pad, a ready wrap measuring pad, healthy living booklet, um, as well as a squeeze in patient referral tear off pads. If you would like further information, please don't hesitate to get in touch with your local LNR representative. Um, but if you're not sure who that is, feel free to get in touch with LNR Custom Services and they'll pass on your details for your local account manager to get in touch with you. Thank you. I'll now pass back over to Claire. Thank you very much both. That was really informative, uh, excellent, and great to see some patients' uh, feedback as well. That was, that was really great. Um, okay, so we've got loads of questions. We've had some great interaction from the audience. So the first question is for Luxme, and, and maybe I'll ask you, Amar, to, to expand later maybe. Uh, so many of my clinical team prefer to bandage as it gives them regular contact with the patient and they are afraid something may go wrong if they let the patient care for themselves. Are there any tips to manage this? So Luxme first. I would love to be able to go and bandage all my patients because obviously we know then we're taking control, but the world is working, we'll walk towards more partnership working. So if we're taking control of the patient legs by just bandaging, how are we empowering them for self-care? Because tomorrow when they're healed, they will need to look after that legs and keeping them in bandages when they're not needed. I find that I'm depriving them of the tool that when I could empower them to be more um, like upskilling themselves to look after their legs, look after their skin, self-care, and I know I will get better outcome in maintaining of that healed leg also. So yes, bandages is good when there is a place for it, but if you're looking, if you're worried that, you know, the things might go wrong, that's where education comes in. And have you come across this much? Uh, um, yes, again, lack of confidence. Sorry, sorry Amar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amar, yeah. No, ap ap apologies for interrupting you, Luxme. Um, I was just going to add on to that, just as you mentioned with education. I think, again, that's really, really important. And it is about education, um, educating the patient so that they're aware. Um, but we do know self-care works. 
Um, and if you look at the Barnsley data um, that came out from the journal of Unke, and again, you know, it's it's quite a, a, a lengthy uh, document, so I'm not going to go over everything. Um, but the the aim was to assess the effects of implementing self care delivery model. Um, and if you look at some of the results, um, 84 out of 95 patients that were selected, um, their venous leg ulcers healed by week 24 on the pathway. A further 10 patients healed by week 42, and the one remaining patient reached 42 weeks without healing. But it just shows that self-care can work. And I think education is very, very important. Brilliant. Yeah, good point there, Amar. OK, so the next question is to you both. Perhaps I'll go to you first, Abar. Um, if my patient has edema above the knee, is there a knee and thigh piece uh, that the patient can use? Yes, we do have um, a, a thigh piece as well as a knee piece as well um, to support with, with full limb. Great. Luxme, anything to add? Do you have any clinical experience with those? No, I have to say, obviously, we don't do lymphedema, but I have right. had a patient with lymphedema, and I find using the knee and the calf piece was very easy for a normal clinicians like gastric nurses, because, yes, we would bandage the lower limb, but for the above, we use the knee, and it was very helpful. Okay, lovely. Okay, so the next question again to you both. I'll start with you, Luxme, this time. Uh, how do I measure for ready wrap? And do you have an order form? You must have done Eleanor. this before. <laughs> yes, Eleanor has an order form. It is available, I know, online, but I'm sure if you contact your reps, they have these booklets. We've got it, yes. And it's very easy to measure. And they point out areas that you need to measure, like the wide part of the calf and the, and the malleolus. So I'm sure Amar can talk loads about that because he's always yeah. helping us to educate our clinicians on how to measure. Great, Amar, over to you. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've got we've got loads of copies. So you've got paper um, copies again um, that can be sent out to, to each base. Um, you've got interactive copies as well. Um, and again, if nurses do need a little bit of a refresher, um, if they haven't used it for a while, again, we can support with face-to-face -face visits um, and we're more than able to help with, with virtual sessions as well to make it easier. Great, okay. So our next question is, uh, are the liners available separately? So Lakshmi, if we come to you first. Yes, uh, they are very available on FP10 to prescribe. And Amar knows that it's been a long awaiting, but patients are so happy. So yes, it can be prescribed and as many pairs as you want and to replace it. Okay, anything to add, Amar? Uh, no, just um, yeah. that they are now readily available. I know, I know it has right. been um, a while, but we have finally got this. So you can order them, prescribe them. Okay. 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 So our next question is to Luxme. Um, I like the idea of using ReadyRap to make better use of the skill mix in my team, but many of our patients are reluctant to self-care. Um, how can we encourage them to try this? So personally, I would say being a nurse, first and foremost, I've got skill mix in my team. And what we do when we feel the patient will benefit, we always had a sample in the clinic to show them what it is, let them have a play with it. And when we know they're ready for like transferring, because remember, if a patient comes to you with one leg that's got the ulcer, the other leg should be in some form of garment already. And that's where I said in my presentation that in your holistic assessment from day one, you need to be thinking what the patient can and can't do. So if for me, the patient will not be able to wear the hosiery, I would have measured that legs for wrap already. And while they're coming to us for bandages for the other leg, this is where we'll be supporting them, educating them, encouraging them to apply it with us until you know, they get confident with it. So sometimes just having a sample and getting them to see how it works and how easy it is makes a difference. That's a good, good, some good tips there. Thank you. Amar, anything to add? Um, just to, again, just follow on with the with the education. I think this is where uh, Club Squeeze In really comes into its own. Um, again, like I said, you know, it's supported by by Johnny Vegas, and hopefully this will give patients some motivation. Um, you know, you've got loads of tips and, and guides on there: healthy eating, exercise, um, how-to video guides, and things like that as well. Um, so I think if they Kind of register and sign up to that they will get a lot of information to kind of help and educate with with their condition great thank you for that 
Um, so the next question says, um, do you put stock in it under the ready wrap? So Luxme, what, what would you so, say to that? Disclaimer, again, I know the ready wrap come with a, their own liners, but I have patients who don't like to use it. Some like to use ActiFast or um, uh, ClinifaST, and some like to use their own leggings because obviously if there's no exudate, there's no reason why they can't do it. We've discussed it with Amar and we found that actually, it's actually fine for them to wear it. So provided we've kind of support the patient in making sure they're applying the garment properly, the liners was like irrelevant, whether you use a cotton stocking, active fast yellow line or the normal liners of the ready wrap. But obviously I know it's recommended to use the appropriate garment. Okay. And Amar, anything to add there? Um, just, you know, pretty much reiterating everything that Luxmi said, you know, again, because the liners that comes with the ready wrap, there's no compression, you don't have to use them. Uh, again, some of the feedback I've had from nurses, some patients use football socks, you know, as long as you've got that protection, that barrier against the skin, then that's absolutely fine. It's not a problem at all. Okay. So the next question is to Luxmi. Um, how long should a patient wear the same set of wraps before getting remeasured? So we actually always make sure they have two pairs. So we always say that it goes like, uh, obviously properly with maintenance, not uh, when you're washing it, being careful and everything. So every six months, we make sure they have a new pair of wrap because then that lasts them, um, you know, for at least a year for the two pairs. Okay, anything to add, Amar? Uh, uh, like Samis kind of mentioned that quite succinctly, um, absolutely each. Each ready wrap lasts for six months, so we always recommend um, yeah. ordering a pair so they can alternate between the two, in which case um, it can last up to 12 months. Great. Okay. Um, so the next question asks, um, you mentioned the lymphatic issues. Could, they, could these be used as an alternative in lymphedema and lymphorrhea patients? So Luxme? I do use it on lymphedema patient and especially that we got the knee and the thigh piece as well. It is well received by my lymphedema patient. If there is lymphorrhea, obviously I will make sure there's a proper absorbent, like super absorbent pad or anything if needed before they put the radio wraps, but there's no reason why they can't use it. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, the next question I think is perfect for Amar. Um, is ready wrap available in various sizes? Yes, um, ready wrap is quite um, a large extensive size range um, and you'll find that they'll actually fit majority of your patients. Um, again, obviously when you've measured, um, if you're not sure, again, you can always call your LNR representative and they're more than happy to, to kind of talk through some of the measurements and potentially what other alternative solutions there may be. Okay, great. So our next question is, um, can an absorbent pad or dressing be used underneath these wraps? As I mentioned in previously, yes. And if there is a need for it, I do have patients who's got really wet legs, but do not want bandages. And they find it easier in terms of shared care to use super absorbent under the ready wraps. And it has made no impact on, if anything, it has improved their quality of life. Okay. Amar, anything to add there? Uh, no, I think Lakshmi yep. said that really well. Okay, lovely. Okay, so the next question is for you, Amar. Um, can I have some more information about the liners that you mentioned? Um, yeah, that's absolutely fine. So um, I, again, I think there will be some information once this um, video has gone in regards to um, more on the liners. Um, but again, if you want to get in touch with your local LNR representative, um, they'd be more than happy to send you some further information in regards to how you're able to, to order and prescribe with the codes, et cetera. Okay, lovely. Um, and also this one's for you, Amar. Um, are we able to order samples of ready wrap for clinic? Um, again, yeah, every area is different. So if you get in touch with your local LNR representative, they'll be more than happy to provide you with all the information you need, um, as well as, like I said, they'll be able to do um, virtual sessions as well as face-to-face -to, -face to ensure that you thoroughly are comfortable with using ready wrap okay um the next question i think is for you Luxmi. um it's can you over compress with ready wrap yeah this is why it's very safe 
because when you're applying the Velcro, um, I think I'm going to show you how to get the, the Velcro around earlier. You can see that you can never overcompress. If anything, um, I've got patients who say, while they are a lot on their legs during the day, they felt that their legs are swollen, they can ease it off a little bit. But then when we explain the process of compression and how it has to be firm and supportive, that's where the ready wrap can help achieve that without any other uh, compromising the venous circulation there. So it cannot be over compressed. Okay, brilliant, thank you. Um, Amar, we've got a question um, asking, how can they be washed? Are you able to help that? Yeah, perfect. Um, so with the ready wrap, um, again, they can be um, washed in the uh, washing machine, but obviously when we do that, we'd recommend uh, to wash it separately just to ensure, obviously, if you get any um, other material, you don't want any of the lints um, kind of getting trapped within the Velcro. Um, but, you know, the big no-no is to do not put it in the dryer. That's when you'll actually damage the ready wrap. Um, but again, you know, again, feedback I've got from nurses, um, they normally tell their patients um, hand wash um, because, again, that will avoid them putting in the dryer um, and just let it air dry. Don't put it directly on top of a radiator. If you've got a sort of ledge that sits just above the radiator, that's fine. Um, just not directly on heat. OK. OK, well, it seems that we've come to the end of the questions, which is amazing. So. Um, I just want to thank you both again for an excellent presentation and some great answers to the questions there. For further information on ReadyWrap, you can contact LRUK customer service at uk.lrmed.com or as Amar said, you can contact your local account manager. Um, the certificate link should be on your screen now and the recording of today's session and the slides will be available on our website shortly. And if you want to be first to know about future JCN events, then follow our Facebook page and you'll, you'll get to know very quickly what's coming up. So that's it from us today. Uh, thank you all very much for watching. And thank you again, Eleanor, for supporting this session. And we hope to see you all again soon. Thank you. <laughs>